I got addicted to like how much beats and like product can I just get out there? Because if I'm everywhere, it's, something's gonna get picked up. Ever since I was a kid, I was that kid who just like walk around with one earbud in in school during lectures and the teacher would yell at me for listening to music. So I've always been interested in music, but I never like grew up playing instruments or anything like that. I just got a tutorial on YouTube on how to make a beat for uh, XXX, you remember him? And I just went down the rabbit hole. I was 14 at the time. I was straight A student. I played on like the most competitive hockey team. Two years later, tried to drop out of high school. I quit playing hockey, went all in. I've been doing this since I was 15 full time, like started cheating on my assignments at school, dropping classes. So I've been all in on this for, for a minute. But yeah, it all started just from a YouTube video that I got on how to make beats and just went from there. At least in like the rap world, everyone's on FL Studio, but I'm on Logic because at the time I, I just was using like my family computer. It was like a 2008 MacBook. And at the time FL Studio wasn't on Max. So I had to use Logic, which is pretty much just like the advanced version of GarageBand. I learned from watching FL Studio tutorials. That's how I learned how to make beats. So I had to figure out how to do the things that they were doing in there in my program, which was kind of a bitch, but I figured it out. <laughs> So I would say like my whole strategy, my whole motto is like, put yourself out there, build yourself up, and then let opportunities, connections, all that stuff come to you, rather than chasing everyone's tail. I focus on building my online presence and my online brand, and with that, I'm able to monetize it. I sell kits, more people see my face, so then I can network with bigger producers and they sell their stuff on BeatStars. I get percentage of the sales that I do on Beats with them. And then also bigger industry producers see my name. Then they want loops from me. I start working with them. My biggest song, it's got like 160 million streams, was a YouTube type beat that Lil TJ found. I've got four songs with Lil TJ and every single one was just a YouTube type beat from BeatStars that he just picked up and ended up using. Almost all of my success just comes from people finding my stuff rather than me hustling and trying to get it to the right people. I just do me, put myself out there on all the platforms I can, and then I let the rest work itself out. If you just want to get started, just start with like short form content. If you're just lazy, if you won't just post some videos of you bopping your head to your beat or your loop or whatever you were making and post that on social media. Cause if you look at, there's a dude named Nico Barron. You got Drake followed him. He's got like four records with Kanye right now that are unreleased because of him posting reels on TikTok of him playing his loops and being like POV, Drake needs a, a hit or whatever. Short form content, showing off your beats, your stuff uh, with your face in it. Instead of worry, worrying about perfect strategy to build your brand, I think the best advice is just like, just start. I sucked at content at first. I was like shaky on camera. I didn't know what to do. I felt weird. Now I'm comfortable on camera and then I get better video ideas. So it just gets better over time, just like you would with producing. So I would just say, get the ball rolling, get over your fear of like putting your face out there and just, just start. So I'm actually kind of like unconventionally successful on BeatStars because I'm not making most of my income on my own like beats that I'm releasing. I found everyone who was doing well on BeatStars and on the YouTube type beats. And I just started networking with them and sending them my melodies. And then they flipped them into full beats and they give me 50-50 splits uh, on the revenue. And that was like my bread and butter for a super long time. That was like carrying all my income. I was just sending loops to these people who had already built up their platform. And essentially, instead of just going off of like how many places I can get my beats, I'm doing it with like 50, 100 people where they can put their stuff. It's a numbers game. It's just like, there's way more opportunities for something to, for a big rapper to use it or just a beat to blow up and get a bunch of sales. So I just put my stuff everywhere religiously. I've never tried to like work with a guy who's sending to this artist or anything like that. It was kind of becoming like a popular thing to like send your melodies out instead of doing full beats all the time. So I started doing that, but I wasn't really seeing any success with it. Most producers do this where they send one Dropbox link once a week of the stuff that they made that week. And I was getting like no traction. And then I switched to, I send one loop to each producer every single day, like without missing every single day, I send them one idea cause it's a lot more digestible to like just have one thing. What kind of happened is people started using them 
and I started realizing like, oh, like I'm actually making money from people selling stuff with my loops on their beat stars. And then it became a goal in my mind, like I wanna get one beat collab a day. Like I want one big producer to use my loop a day. And then all of a sudden that started being normal. And then I was like two a day, three a day. And then now it gets to the point I get added like 20, 15, 20 times a day. I got addicted to like, how much beats and like product can I just get out there? Cause if I'm everywhere, it's, something's gonna get picked up. I can't complain about the hands-off approach. I mean, obviously, if Drake wanted me to be in the room with him every day, I, obviously I would want to do that. But maybe I'm just comfortable with how, how my life is, but I, I like waking up at five in the morning, going to the coffee shop, working, sending my stuff out, hanging out with my girl and going to bed at 9 p.m. Like, I just like having my like organized daily routine and not having to stay up till four in the morning going to sessions and worrying about people showing up late and all this stuff. I just, I would like to have more of a say in records that I do uh, work on sometimes, but I love the freedom that I get with like the hands-off approach because I don't have to be locked into one city doing sessions and all that kind of stuff. Part of me was like just expectations like, oh, I need to like get something like product. I need to get a bunch of placements out of this. But honestly, I just like, yeah, it's, it's gonna be fun. And then I'm also gonna learn. Even if I'm not actually going to in the future be grinding sessions and stuff, I'm gonna at least have a much better idea of how they go. So now whenever I'm sending to people who are in the sessions, I can kind of know like, oh, that intro is way too long. They're not even gonna listen through that. More experience with like how, how this stuff actually works. Uh, which I think is good even if you're not gonna be in person all the time. To do that right, well one, I feel like, not lucky, but you need to you need to have an artist that has work ethic, has the image, uh, people like them, sounds good. All those together and, uh, and like has a good chemistry with you, I feel like that's hard enough to find. That's not like a side project I can do. And I feel like I'm just so deep into the online stuff that I can't, I could see maybe in the future if I've made enough money that I don't need to hustle that stuff anymore, just being like, this seems more fun than doing that and then delegate those tasks and just go do that. But for now, I think I'm just, I'm just worried about building myself up uh, as big as I can get, especially with the online stuff. If I never get another placement again, I'm cool, but getting placements is a lot more fun and like thrilling and it's just, it's cool to make songs that everyone's listening to. I was already successful and then I did videos about like, stuff I already knew about instead of just making a bunch of money off of having a producer audience and then trying to like sell them on how to make beats. You know what I mean? Like I was already doing it and then I was just giving out the information for free. I have seen so many producers that were like super hot for like a year or two and they had popping online businesses. And then after that year or two, either they got lazy, they got their big publishing check and they weren't grinding anymore or their sound just got outdated. The, the artist switched up on them, wanted a different producer. There's so many variables with the industry side of things that I think can go wrong. It's like a delicate situation. And then I see those guys coming back and being like, now I want to get back on BeatStars. I want to start posting my stuff again because like I'm not getting paid for any of this industry stuff and like my publishing advance is running low. So I just want to keep living off my online stuff that I can control. And then if I can build my publishing and my placements up higher than that, that would be amazing. But at the end of the day, if if money wasn't an issue at all, I would, I would rather make music than do business stuff. Whenever a big, like a really big one, like my 21 Savage one or a, a future one, ones like that, like I'll get really hyped and I'll be watching all the, like the reviews of the album and all that stuff for like a couple days, but Honestly, I'm just so busy. Maybe I'm I'm fucking up, but I'm just so busy that I'm just like, I gotta get back onto the next stuff that I gotta work on. I can't really focus on like stuff that I already did. Sometimes it does hit me. I'm like, randomly I'll just be driving. I'll be like, damn, I got a, I got two songs with Twenty One Savage. What the fuck? I joined BeatStars Publishing twenty yeah twenty twenty one at the time it was the number one top selling beat on beat stars mike reached out to versa who i did the beat with and he signed him to beat stars publishing and then he noticed that on the collaborator section there was also another name which is mine and he hit me up and just kind of told me what they were about 
And honestly, I had just been in a bad deal with like a, a manager before. So I was like, man, I'm not gonna sign any deals. But I had my lawyer look over it. He said it was good. And then also I was like, well, they're collecting money that I'm not even collecting anyways. Like I, I have some cool big-ish songs out there that I'm not making a dime off of other than just like posting on Instagram. And I was like, they take a small percentage and they don't own anything it's year to year. It seemed pretty fair to me. So I was just like, it seemed like a no brainer. I was like, I'm not getting this money anyway. So I might as well like get something. And then I kind of thought it was a myth, like publishing. I just didn't believe like I was actually going to see real money from it. The first like six, eight months, didn't really see anything in my publishing account. I was just like, ah, whatever. Like I might see $3 a year off this or some random bullshit like that and then they started rolling in and they get bigger and bigger and bigger over time i just got my biggest one yesterday it just deposited i invest a lot back into my business online I'm just, as i'm sure you know so even if i make a lot in a month i might i might make less than when i was making less money per month because it's less profit because i'm putting so much back into my business but one thing that publishing has really helped me with is like that's 100 percent profit so if i'm ever in a little bit of a bind like my expenses are really really high that month and then my publishing check comes in i can pay my mortgage for a couple months and i'm i'm set for a while so that's been super helpful if i keep continuing at this pace with the songs that i'm getting i think that eventually it will just because my songs from five years ago are still going to be collecting money uh, on top of all the new placements i got this year and this year and this year but a lot of the time it's like it falls off quick like the the sales for something it's like you gotta consistently be putting out new product to to keep the sales at a certain number. But with the publishing, it's like, I do that song once, all that work went into getting the song once, get it cleared, get the paperwork signed, and then it's done, like it's registered. I get paid off that for the rest of my life. So I could see that compounding and eventually being bigger than that. My goal is to get 52 placements this year, so one a week. And I wrote down my strategy to do that, is literally just put out more loop kits not even industry like sessions or any like i feel like i was getting caught up in like working on industry stuff and my sales were starting to go down a little bit and then i was just looking i was like every single one of my biggest songs is from someone finding my stuff online i probably have only a handful that are like i knew this guy who is in the studio with Lil baby or whoever and like so i just i just put my stuff out i feel like the reason i keep going as hard as i do is Either me or some or other people are waiting for me to like fall off and I just I don't want to be that guy who like was hot for two years and then falls off the face of the planet. I want to keep going up. So I feel like I just got to keep going harder and keep raising the bar. I just feel like I'm never good enough. Not not on some depressing vibe, but just like there's always something more I can be doing. There's always someone who's doing something better than me and I'm trying to just like keep up in my game. <laughs>